Hi, I'm Mary Brooks and today I'm going to show you how I did my makeup on my wedding day. So the first thing I'm going to do is put on my moisturiser. This is a simple sun protection factor 10. I use this every day. Most people say, why don't you use more expensive ones? But I just know that this doesn't react to my skin, so I always use this every single day. I didn't want to change it my wedding day in case I was allergic to something. <laughs> I've actually got the box here if you want to have a look at that while I rub this in. It comes in this box only about £6.99 from Boots. And this one lasts me about four to six weeks. They also do a night cream, which is really good as well. And I'll just show you in a second my under eye cream, which is also a boot, a simple make. So this is the eye cream. I turned 30 a couple of weeks ago and I've now gone on to the age, <laughs> age restricting eye cream. So I just put a little bit of this under my arm. You don't want to put too much on in case it gets a bit too greasy and your makeup runs, which you definitely don't want to do on your wedding day. I also found that if you put it here, this is where you get a lot of the um, creases as you get older, just around this bit here, so always try and make sure you put a bit of your eye cream just around here to stop any wrinkles appearing. So my actual makeup I'm going to use on my skin is the Bare Minerals range. I only started using this a few weeks ago, but I, it's really good, it just takes a little while to do, but obviously on your wedding day, you don't care spending a bit longer on your makeup. So the first thing you have to do before you do any of that is put the Prime Time Primer on. This is also a sun protection factor 15, which is really good. And all you need is a pea size amount on the top, so if you squeeze it up, and that is literally all you need. So I always blot it onto the four, four areas of my skin and then rub it in and it makes your skin feel really lovely and soft. And just make sure you bring it through down to your neck as well because you don't want the line appearing with foundation so if you just bring it down it means that you can push all of your foundation down to your neck. The first thing you need to do with Bare Minerals is put your first base layer on. So this is a medium beige colour and there's six different core shades and I think they do some other, other shades in between as well but this is one of the main ones, it's apparently their best seller, the, the medium beige. So you need to be careful here because it's very light powder. So if you turn the little thing over, first of all what I was doing is I was bringing it right open, tapping some into my lid and half the pot was coming out. So I've discovered if you just show one little hole and then tap it into your lid, I just do two little taps. First of all, you need to use the big brush. So I got the starter kit actually, and this is called a full, full flawless face brush, this one here. And this comes with the starter kit. So with the starter kit you get three lots of foundation but also three brushes so I'll go through all of those as we go through. So you need to be really careful here, try not to do it when you're on a carpet, <laughs> I've already made that mistake. You have to rub it in and make sure there's nothing left in the lid at all so you need to try and get it all on the brush and actually you'll see that you can't really see it on the brush you just need to keep going and making sure it gets all in between each brush stroke. And then start on my chin you just need to make circular motions with the brush and the more you rub it in the better it looks and it really does cover better the more you rub it in. There's, if you wanted to have quite a natural skin you could just do literally one of these. However I always do two and probably on my wedding day I would do three layers just to make sure that you're really covered and obviously you can get away with a bit more makeup on your photographs because if not it looks like you haven't got much makeup on photographs if you don't wear a lot. So that's my first layer and then no one, they didn't tell me to do this but I've discovered this kind of works best. The next thing I do is I use my concealer brush which is also um, a Bare Minerals one. This one's called Max Coverage Concealer. 
So you use the same foundation again to tap one more lot into your pot. And then on any blemishes, you then use this in much more concentrated. So I've got a few spots growing. If I just cover over those with this first of all. And the reason I do this between my layers of foundation is that when you do your next layer of foundation, it really does cover them up and it does make sure you don't kind of see that you've obviously got some foundation on. So if there's any areas you know you always want to cover up, just go over those. I've got a little bit of scarring down here. So I cover over those. Okay, so I'm just going to do my second layer of foundation. So again, two taps into my pot. Circle it round. And big strokes all around your face. At this stage, it doesn't look that impressive, actually, this foundation. I was thinking, oh God, I used to use a MAC um, foundation, which is quite thick. And so I was worried this wasn't going to be enough coverage. But you'll see, as I build up the layers, it really does cover better and, and give a nicer natural look. And obviously I think it's a bit better for your skin. So it allows your skin to breathe a bit better than the heavy MAC ones that I used to use. So the next stage is using, this is a warmth. So this is, a Bare Minerals again, it's called warmth. And this will give your face some definition, some shape. So what you need to do with this one, it's kind of like a bronzer. I'm just going to do two taps of that. And this time I'm going to use a little brush. This one's called Flawless Face, but the small brush. The reason you use a small brush on this one is because you want to contour your face, and obviously if you've got a big brush, you're kind of going to rub it all over. So again, make sure it's completely in on the brush, and covered right over. You can also tap the brush at the end, but I actually don't, didn't think put too much on here. And then if you start on your forehead and do a circle of three. And then do the other side. So it really does give some kind of shape to your face and some definition. I actually do this twice, so I'm, I do it once, two more little taps, and then do it again. The reason why is because actually I think the medium beige might be a bit light for my skin, um, especially in the summer, it's probably, actually it's probably quite good for the winter. Um, so this one just gives you that extra colour. And the other thing is, the next stage is a, it's called a veil, so you have to put this clear veil foundation over the top. The problem with that is it seals your foundation on your face but it also is quite pearly and for me I like quite like dark skin so I always find I probably need to put a bit too much of this on at this stage. Just rub it in my neck. Next stage is this veil, which is called Mineral Veil. I don't think they do this in any other colour, I think it is just this standard one, it's called Original Mineral Veil on the back there. So exactly the same prints again. I've gone back to the big brush, this is the brush I used for my foundation originally, and obviously it's a similar colour, so you can keep using the same brush for this one. This is really fine, so be really careful. I actually only opened the, the whole half ray on this one, because it is so fine that it comes out really quickly. So I don't really need to tap it, you kind of just need to give it a little shake. And that's it. And then with this one again, all over your face, and this will seal your foundation and make sure it stays on all day. The good thing with this one is as well, this one's a good one to take with you on your wedding day. And if you don't want to obviously do your full makeup again, you can just quickly top this one up and it will just give a much nicer finish and also take any greasiness away from your face, which you don't really want on your wedding photos. 
So you can do that once or twice. I'm just going to do it once for now. So the next stage, they actually do loads of lovely Bare Minerals blushes, but I'm halfway through a MAC one at the moment, so I'm going to carry on using this until I run out and then I'll buy some more. So this one's called Spring Sheen by MAC. It's quite a coral colour. I really like the colour of this one. I used to have a darker one, which actually, you'd think I'd use darker in the summer, but I use a lighter one in the summer, um, because it gives, I don't know, it's quite corally and quite summery. My dark one doesn't look quite so good with the brown skin. So for this one, I actually use a Benefit brush. This is called Blush Powder Brush by Benefit. And I just find it really soft and really nice to put on blusher. So with your blush, you obviously start in your base here and brush it upwards like this. Normally on your wedding day, you'd have probably had your hair done before you do your makeup. So you just need to be careful you don't rub too much into your hair here with these blushes, because I always tend to do that and get to work and realise I've put too much in. <laughs> and again with blusher, I, I always tend to put a bit too much on, because I just think it really does bring out the colour of your eyes. These corally ones, as you can see, you can probably see the colour of my eyes have slightly changed now. Um, and the more pinky corally it is, the more bluey green my eyes look. So keep layering it up, make sure you rub it right in to make sure you don't have a strong definition line. And then just finish it over your nose and at the top of your face and on your chin. And I just do it on my neck actually as well because it just blends in the colour a little bit better. So that's my face done. Oh, you can you see my dog in the background? <laughs> yeah, that's Flo everyone. I actually forgot to put on my concealer under my eyes but actually the best thing to do with this is to put it at the end because if not you just go over it anyway. So I'm just going to do this before I move on to my eye makeup. So this one's just a L'Oreal one, I wear it every day so it's a bit worn, and um, it's called Touch Magnique. Um, I've found this one to be the best one, and actually my eyes are quite sensitive, so I've, I react to other ones, and I always make sure I use the, the buy the lightest colour, because I've found that if you, if you buy anything darker than that, actually it makes your eyes look quite they've got bags under them so I think the lighter the better because they always do fade and you could always put a bit of foundation over the top anyway so my next stage is my eyes so the next thing I'm going to do is put my eyeshadow on this one is called matte no it's not it's called malt matte by MAC this one's quite a light colour and the reason I'm going to do this today is because for this wedding makeup I want to put my lips um, a, a red colour. I'm wearing quite a vintage dress so I want to make sure that my lips are quite bright but I don't want to wear too much eye makeup if that's the case. So I'm just going to put on a little bit of this and then bring it right up to underneath your eyebrow as well just to lift your eyebrows and always make sure you put it in the corner of your eyes here Especially with uh, only with light eyeshadow, actually. Um, if you use dark ones, don't do that. If you use light ones, it will actually open up your eye a bit more and make your eyes look bigger. I learned that from a few of the older girls at school. <laughs> you have to be careful not to put too much of this on because you don't want creases, um, especially as you probably will get quite hot in your wedding dress throughout the day. And I am going to put quite a dark eyeliner on. The usual one I would wear is actually it's called Bountiful Brown. It's quite bronzy. However, I think when you have a photo shoot or your photographs taken, you really do need to have quite a dark eyeliner on because I think your, your eyes just don't stand out enough if not. So this one is another MAC one. It's called Duck. And it's just, I actually prefer the, the pencils, they obviously have the ones as well that you can wind up, but I think they, they actually run out really quickly, so I've always gone on to the pencils since then. And I use just a really nice little MAC 
pencil sharpener as well. I've tried loads of these and they all keep breaking in my makeup bag, so this is the only one that actually doesn't break, which is good. I'm just gonna get myself a bit closer to the mirror to do this. <laughs> So with your eyeliner, I tend to draw my eyeliner right around the edge of my eye because it makes your eyes look bigger. Um, on a night out, actually what I also do is put it on the inside of my eye just to kind of darken my eyes even further, but I won't be doing that on my wedding day. The next thing is the liquid eyeliner, and I absolutely love this L'Oreal one. However, there's two different types, and this time I've bought the wrong one. So this is the Super Liner in black. They also do one, which is, um, instead of being the gold around here, it's actually a blue, a metallic -y blue. That is the one that I would buy and recommend, because that one doesn't smudge at all. This one is so heavy that actually, when you get hot, it does smudge, and you do end up getting a slight line here so I would recommend this but in the blue version but obviously the black colour. So because I'm going to go quite vintage for my wedding day and have red lips I want my eyes to be quite thick on top the black line. So everyone draws this on differently. I find that my eyes are quite round so to make my eyes slightly longer, I actually only start in the middle of my eye. If I started right over here, my eyes would look really round, but I've got friends that start right over here and they look beautiful, so it really is up to you. I think you should experiment with this a little bit first. Just gonna shake it. I'm not going to do a flick, I'm just going to make it bl block. As you might be able to see, I've also got eyelash extensions on. So if you have a look, these are actually towards the end of their cycle. So they last three weeks and I go back every three weeks. I'm actually going back on, it's now um, Saturday, so I'm going to go back on Tuesday. So they're nearly at the end. And what happens every time I go back, they just infill them so they add more to it and you can get loads of different thicknesses and lengths. On my wedding day, I actually, I was a bit disappointed really, because I hadn't had them done long, and I wasn't very firm with her, and she gave me quite short ones, and I think, I really think your eyelashes are, are really important on your wedding day, because on photographs they look amazing if they're really thick and long, so I really um, would recommend something like this for your wedding day, and also, if you are then going straight on a honeymoon, these are perfect for in, in the sea and in the water and everything, you don't actually have any makeup on, which is lovely. So, I'm using, there's, I'm, I'm a bit unsure with that mascara actually, I, I've used this one for years, but my favourite is probably a long con one, um, which my sister uses, but for some reason I keep buying this one, I think it's because I have my eyelash extensions done now, I don't really want to spend a lot on a mascara. So this one is a L'Oreal. I get it in extra black. You can get a waterproof one, but I don't really like the waterproof ones because they hurt when you take them off. So with eyelash extensions, you generally don't put much mascara on them. So I'm just going to put some mascara on the bottom. But also, because they're towards the end of the cycle now, and I'm having them done again on Tuesday, I do now start to put some on. My last week before I have them done, I do actually put some on the top, and actually it just kind of combs your eyelashes and makes them a nicer shape, and makes them a bit fuller again still. I'm also in the process of having um, eyeliner tattooed on my face which is a bit extreme. However, I'm having it quite natural and you have to have it done once and then go back and have it topped up because with any tattoo, it fades really quickly and sort of scabs over 
comes off and then you have to have it topped up. So I've had my first session and I'll have my second session next week. So I'll show you the results of that. At the moment it's not particularly strong or doesn't really show up at the moment so I'll make sure I have it um, a bit darker next time. So my eyes really are quite light, I haven't done too much to them, I haven't put any colour on them at all because I want to put my colour into my lipstick. So that's my eyes finished now. I'm just going to do my eyebrows next. So you can also get your eyebrows tattooed actually, one of my friends just had hers done. But I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure if it's a fashion to have them dark at the moment, if it is actually a permanent thing. So I'm not brave enough for that. So I'm going to use um, Brows, which is a Benefit um, eyebrow pencil or makeup. It's called Medium. I use the Medium colour. You can get a light. The problem with the light one is it's quite gingery. So I always go for the Medium and the dark is really quite black. And this really is so much better than an eyebrow pencil because it just stays on all day, it looks quite natural. So what you need to do on here is you get a little brush, you wipe it into the dark, which is quite a sticky um, powder, and then this, into this one which is more of the dry powder. So you put about the same amount on, and then you just define your eyebrows with it. So I always start in the middle here make the shape I want. So I always follow just my natural brow and normally as well my eyebrows are a little bit dark in this because I have them tinted when I have my eyelashes done so again I'll be having those tinted on Tuesday. And I think this is really important to have this this kind of makeup on your wedding because your eyebrows will just get completely lost in photographs if you don't define them at all unless you've got really dark eyebrows. In which case you're very lucky. Sometimes they, they go a little bit bitty, so all I do is just start again really. Put my brush into the dark one and then the light powder again and just keep brushing it in. probably see that I used to actually have my eyebrow pierced which is um, a bit of a shame now I don't wear it because I've got a nice scar there. <laughs> the other thing to do with that is you can actually cover it up with a bit more concealer. Oh I don't know if they're very even, I was going to do this one again. The good thing about this eyebrow thing is if it, if you're not happy that you can easily just quickly take it off your eyebrows and just start again. It doesn't really affect the rest of your makeup. Okay, so now to the lips. I think it's worth spending a bit of money on some good lipstick, especially if you're going to wear it for your wedding day. You don't want it sticking to your teeth in photographs or anything like that. So if you are going to go for a bold colour like a red or a coral or a bright pink, I think you will need to be careful and make sure you buy a good um, lipstick. So I actually haven't got a very good lip liner at the moment. However, you don't really need a lip liner with this Chanel lipstick. So this is a Chanel, um, I don't actually know what it's called, but it's a Chanel number 75 and it's a it's a quite like a lip gloss but it's a quite a thick colorful lip gloss and it's kind of it does stay on like a lipstick does so I'm just gonna start drawing it on I wear this so often it's actually running out a little bit now And again with this, I'd layer it up, so I'd just do one layer first of all, 
and sort of rub it in and then do another layer over the top. can wear which makes them a little bit glossier because this is this isn't a matte lipstick obviously it's quite a sheen to it but Chanel do this other um, clear gloss which apparently was their best ever seller um, so I'm just gonna show you what that does it just gives it a bit more of a sheen but also what it does is actually moisturizes your lips which is quite nice because you don't want your lips drying out and you could leave just the lip gloss on to start off with and then put this on throughout the day but I do quite like this and I do think it is worth I think it wasn't that expensive actually I think it's only about 15 or 16 pounds I suppose it's quite expensive for a lip balm but I do think it's um it's worth it it does moisturize your lips when you've got lipstick on so that is my wedding makeup for a vintage look